Chattanooga down to the north side of Atlanta. I'm sure north side. Well, Chattanooga's a big city. I don't know which one to pay better, but probably Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. I actually got jumped in Chattanooga. Ooh. Yeah. Tell us this story. I ain't heard this story no. yet. I felt foolish because I went down. We lived at the, the apartment complex. Ah, complex that we lived at was right down the street from a Kmart. <laughs> Hey, it worked twice. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> so, that's all that matters. <laughs> See, that's some of the kind. That's some of the things I want to be able to leave in, but it's like I want to make it somewhat kid friendly. Yeah, I don't it's think like, we can't go that far. But it's for fun. All right, episode two with Brian Santos on the mat at Wolf Hunter Jiu Jitsu Club. Or let me correct that, Brian the Butcher Santos. So, uh, let's jump right into it, Brian. You're, we've been training together since when? When did you start? January of 2016. January 2016. Yeah, and I'm not sure when exactly I started the morning classes. So, for y'all watching, uh, me and Brian started training together January 2016. He was um, training at nighttime mainly at that yeah, time. Yeah, I started since at night and then... I got tired of doing warm-ups. <laughs> so, for y'all that don't know. Uh, Big surprise there. Yeah, sometimes uh, warm-ups in jiu-jitsu class are a little extreme. So, so back then in 2016, the nighttime warm-ups were pretty extensive. Yeah, 15 minutes of running, shrimping. Yeah, yeah. Down the, uh, the mat. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, 38. So, you started jiu-jitsu at 38 years old. Yep. This is one of those questions I feel like I should know, but I don't think I ever asked you. Did you ever do any martial arts training prior no, to that? No, that was the first time. Okay. What what got you into jiu-jitsu? Uh, the same as everybody else listening to Joe Rogan. Um, put the idea in my head. Yeah. And my wife was working nights, and my mother-in-law lived with us, and I needed, <laughs> needed an excuse to get yeah. out of the house, so I figured, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. Get out and get some mat time in. Yep. How long... How long were you listening to Joe Rogan? How long would how long did uh, it take for you to learn about what Jiu Jitsu was I, through Rogan to train it? I couldn't tell you. Yeah, to be honest, I, maybe six seven months. Oh, so it didn't. No, I've talked to some people in the past that's been like, uh, "Oh, I thought about it for the past two or three years, and just never would do it." So six or seven months, probably at max. Yeah, and then you jump right in. Yep. So, how many breaks have you taken since then? What do you, how do you qualify a break? Like, I say a life event of three months or more. Um, probably two. You know, when I hurt my shoulder, and then when I had my surgeries. I swear, Those are the two that I remember. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that in preparation for this. You know, a lot of times life hits people. They just stop jujitsu for a little while to get things right. And I don't ever remember you having, like, any significant breaks outside of your surgery. No. I mean, I think if I took – if when I would – like, the times I was injured, I would get antsy. And yeah. I was like, I got I to go back and, you know, get, yeah. no, get back I, into the groove of things. I would agree. I, I think I would do the same thing. All right, talk about this injury. What injury did you have? Uh, my shoulder injury. Um, or the, I, I think I sprained it um, with Aaron. I don't know. He didn't really train in the morning times. I remember Aaron. He was a nighttime guy. We were doing um, uh, what they call the fireman carry throws where uh -huh. you kind of drop down your knees and yeah. throw them. And I think I lost my balance somehow and landed on my shoulder, and he landed on top of me. And So you had... had 400 pounds total falling on top of yeah. a shoulder. Yeah, sprained it. Was out for, I think, about three months. What about this surgery? What was that? 
What were those surgeries you had? I had uh, carpal tunnel surgery on both wrists, and uh, they had to move a nerve in my elbows. And I remember those surgeries, and you took it wasn't a long break. What kind of? It no, didn't it was about three months, three four months. I feel like that's a pretty fast turnaround time for some surgeries. Did you do? One, let it heal. No, I did all four of them at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's painful. I, it wasn't that bad. I mean, they put me out, took them like half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I was out of there. It was, you know, outpatient surgery. So Okay. I mean, it sucked the fact that it was in the summertime, so yeah. I was, my arms are wrapped up from my wrists to my elbow, or to my biceps, so. Wow, it was that does get old. uncomfortable, but. Yeah. I was glad I got it all done at the same time. Yeah. Um, so let's back up a little bit. We talked about jujitsu and some injuries and how long you've been training. Let's start out with where are you from? Where am I from? I'm from uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Born, born in Massachusetts, grew up in New Hampshire. So... When so I'm, I'm a Yankee. Yeah, that's why I wanted to get everybody out there. Yep. Brian Santos is a, the Yankee in the group, but uh, you would never guess it because you're not the most vocal guy out loud. That's what when I told everybody, I was like, Brian's going to be one of the first guests. Numerous people are like, no way. I said, yeah, Brian's a talker. I said, no, he's not. Yep. I said, yeah, he is. Y'all just haven't talked to him yet. He's not going to come out of his way to come knock down a conversation with you. But If y'all want to talk to me, come ask me a question, and I'll give you an answer. <laughs> That's right. He'll talk to you if you come ask him a question. So, born in Massachusetts. When did you leave Massachusetts New Hampshire? Uh, I want to say late 70s. I would think I was like two or three when we moved, two or when three? We moved up to New Hampshire. Because I know that there's a lead-up question to this, and I'm getting ready for it here in a second. Um, we'll get back to that. At, so Massachusetts, New Hampshire. What from New? How long did you live in New Hampshire? Uh, from I guess seventy nine to ninety six when I went in the Marines. So the Marine Corps. How old were you when you went to the Marine Corps? Uh, I signed up junior in high school. Ah, uh, oh, you did that program where yeah, they I was send in you the, in the delayed entry program. Yeah, delayed entry. I left uh, ten days after I graduated in ninety six. Um. Paris Island for three months, basic training, and then I went uh, marine combat training in North Carolina for a month, and then from there I went to Okinawa for a year. I did not know you went to Okinawa for a year. Yeah, I was in Okinawa for a year. I did not know that. Yep. Man, we learn something new every day. What would you do in Okinawa? Drink. <laughs> a lot of drinking. A lot of, dr I had a lot of a, drinking. I had a, um, I was going to say high school friend, but it was really an elementary school friend of a friend of mine, we grew up together, elementary, middle, high school. He joined the Marine Corps, became um, a corpsman, and he lived in Japan for a while. And he said he loved it. Yeah. I mean, I I spent a year in Okinawa. Uh -huh. And the whole time I was over there, I was itching to get back. And then once they sent me to Camp Pendleton out in California, I was like, I should have stayed in Okinawa. It's yeah. so much nicer out there. So 18 years old or how? Yeah, I was 18. 18, going straight into Paris Island, Paris Island to North Carolina, to Okinawa. Yep. And then a year there, they send you to California. Where at, Where's that base at in California? That's in between San Diego and Los Angeles. Okay, so still Southern California. Yeah. Good weather? Oh, nice. Great Perfect weather. weather. Yeah. Man, that's the only reason I want to go to California is for the weather. Yeah. Outside I, of that, no thank you. I haven't been out there since, since 2000, but it's just. It's like a whole other country out there. Yeah, for sure. Big difference. Well, they talk about it like, well, San Diego not so much. San Diego is a big military town, so it's still nice. Yeah, the Gaslight District is is a nice, nice party area. Yeah, they let you drink outside, you know, open containers and and whatnot. So your time frame in uh, Southern California, did you ever make it down to Tijuana? Just once. Uh, just once? I thought I, you were going to say no. But no, I, I went one time, and that was enough. I'm the dirty-ass yeah. city. Yeah, I'm not. I was not impressed. No, I'm not hanging out in Mexico. And I, I didn't go out by myself. I went with some of the Mexican Marines that were with us. Yeah. They, uh, they knew where to bring us. Yeah, for sure. So we were we were safe. But, yeah, I, I heard plenty of stories of guys going down there and getting trying to come back with steroids or 
other substances that they shouldn't yeah. be and get in trouble. So, well, speaking of injuries and wrists and shoulders, that's where they're doing all the uh, ways to whale stem cell stuff in Tijuana right now. Really? And uh, and they're talking highly about it. Like, I listened to a, a couple guys talking about stem cells that they got in Tijuana and how it was a like night and day difference, world of difference on some old nagging injuries they had. So, well, I remember when um, Mel Gibson was on Roman's oh. podcast. He talked about his he brought his dad down. To, I think someplace in Central or South America to get get some stem cells. And yeah. So yeah. It, so how old are you now? Forty five. Forty five. We were talking about this the other day. We're kind of going everywhere back and forth, but. As far as the older guys in the gym, you're you're not the oldest, are you? Or I think I'm one of the oldest. I know you're one of the oldest for yeah, sure. But we've talked about this a handful of times. And yeah, I can't ever remember because y'all are all – there's three or four of you that are all like 44, 45, 46. Yeah. Trying to, I can't ever remember who's the oldest. I think me and Steven are about the same age. I'm yeah. not sure what month he was born. Ben is up there too. Yeah, Ben and, um, and Corey, believe it or not. Yeah, Corey. Corey, it's because he keeps that baby face, but he's <laughs> forty four, forty five, I really? think. Yeah. So Corey's older, and I forget his name, but the the guy who had the knee injury that he was back here this past week, actually. Oh, uh, white belt. Uh, that Ben. His name's Ben as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think he's getting up there too. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, he Ben actually the one that had the knee injury. Uh, ben Henning. He actually might be the oldest in the gym. I think. Really? Yeah. He he texts me one day because we're partnering up doing Shark Tank rounds, and when I do Shark Tank rounds, I always try to put the older guys together roughly. I try to put everybody together same skill set, size or age kind of thing. And I made a joke and I said, "All right, Ben, you go over there with all the old guys and." He looked at me like I was crazy, and then he goes and trains with you and the other old guys. Yeah. <laughs> he takes me, takes me the following day saying, man, he said, I haven't been called old in a while. That was hilarious, you calling us the old guys. But that's what, like, jiu-jitsu needs to accommodate different people at different times in their life. Like, yeah. So I you're – go ahead, I'm sorry. It's a big difference rolling with Stephen or Corey as opposed to Marvin or – yeah. Tyler. Yeah, sure. And then especially so you started at thirty eight, you know, you get a couple years of jujitsu in, there's only so much impact. I mean, your bones aren't rubber anymore. No. <laughs> the, I mean there have been plenty of morning time when we were, I would come here and train and then drive to work and then be would be limping into work because yeah. just Yeah. Everything getting you know, muscles tightening up and whatnot. For sure. Yeah, it gets old. So I like the idea of accommodating, you know, rounds for people, especially older, younger, skill set. Um, I don't like to do the uh, getting into the gender debate, but, like, women like to train with other women. Men like to train with other men. They should cross-train, of course. I mean, they should cross-train all the time, but. Sometimes people just want to train with, with others at their weight, size, and skill set. Yeah. You know, these these teenagers we have are absolutely killing me. So it's like, uh, I'm 35 now. have been training for 15 years, and those kids are resilient, as was yeah. best saying. I, like, I tend to, tr- to train with the same people every yeah every class. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, I know I'm used to used to this style, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's appropriate, depending on. Now, if you're 21 years old and saying I only want to train with these five people, yeah, then I'd that's be an issue. picking on you a little bit. Yeah. But at your mid-40s, you can kind of pick and choose who you want to train with. So we get to – Southern California for a year. What's after Southern California? Uh, I came back home. I went back to New Hampshire. Uh-huh. Um, stayed with my dad because my parents had got divorced in 98. You know, um, Worked. 
various jobs here and there until uh, 2006, and then met the wife and our current wife. We dated, got married, had kids, and we uh, moved down to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I want to say 2011. Okay. I didn't know you pit stopped in Tennessee either. Yeah. Um. My sister lived in uh, Cumming, Georgia, uh-huh. and we uh, decided, like, yeah, we're going to move closer to you guys and have all the cousins grow up together. Yeah. And her and her husband were like, yeah, it might not be a good idea. The econ- This is 09. Oh, yeah. So right after the weird the moving crash. around right yeah, now. They're yeah, they're like, we don't think you'll be able to get jobs down here. I'm like, like Heather was in, she was a nursing assistant, and I was a meat cutter. I'm like, I, neither of us will have any issues finding a job. And I flew down one weekend, had applied at the Fresh Market in Chattanooga, interviewed on the Saturday. I flew down on Friday, interviewed on the Saturday, got the job, and then flew back up on on Monday, and then, yeah, we have a month. I was like, I'll be down here in a month, and they waited for me. And a job waiting on you. Yeah. So, w- as I introduced Brian, I said, Brian, the Butcher Santos, because you've been a meat cutter for, when did you start cutting meat? Uh, 2000, 2001, I believe. So, would you have still been in the Marine Corps then? No, nah, it was after I got out. Right after? I had gone back to the local grocery store I worked at, and. They trained me how to cut meat and just kind of went from there. So you cut meat for over 20 years. No. It was. I stopped in 17, so, yeah, close to Has it. it been that long since you've been done? Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that. So the, me and Brian had this conversation a couple of years ago about I was once I found out he was a butcher, I asked him about different cuts of meat that would be best, and he put me on. A cut of steak called the chuck eye. Yep. If y'all have never eaten a chuck eye, it is by far my favorite cut still. It's, it's almost as good as a ribeye. but I think it's just as good, but because maybe because it's half the price. Maybe that's why I like it so much. At the time when I told you that, it was half the price. But, yeah. you know, you never know nowadays. Now it's like, I don't ever, I can't ever find them. Yeah. They're never there. So I don't know if they just sell out faster than I can find them or I don't know. I don't know. I don't Maybe know, some underst- places just grind them up in the Hamburg, which is. That's like, why I was wondering if they just get rid of them. Yeah. But it's like the perfect combo of fat yep. to lean meat ratio. It's like the best steak ever. I yeah, I, can't, I, I love them. To I death. can't tell you how many times I would be cutting up a chuck and be like, "Yeah, that's a nice looking chuck." Yeah. Get a nice two or three inch, couple of nice steaks for me and Heather, and bring those home with me. Oh man, they're the best. So. If y'all ever have any uh, butcher meat questions, Brian's the guy. He's done it for a long time. So, pit stop in Chattanooga. Start, you're cutting meat there at that store. Yep. And, then and what's after Chattanooga? We moved down to uh, Sandy Springs because Heather being a, uh, I guess, a sleep tech, she would have higher paying jobs in Atlanta. So, we that's what. So, sleep tech, that's the... Um, she runs. Oh, what's that called? Sleep the, uh, apnea. The sleep apnea, yeah. sleep studies. So, and I walked down to get something, and I saw three kids up on a hill, right by the Kmart, and it caught my eye, but didn't think anything of it. Went inside and came out, and two of them were on at the edge, of the end of the building, and one of them was still up on the hill, and again. Noticed them, but didn't didn't really put two and two together. You know, went walking back, and sure enough, they all ran up on me, knocked me down. Um, I got back up. One of them held, he had me in like a bear hug, and they were reaching for my wallet. I get out, you know, got loose of the bear hug, tried grabbing one of them, and they were, you know, all kind of scrambling. I, I, the police were saying it was some kind of gang gang initiation. And I noticed that they were reaching for my wallet. I'm like, and I had just got my license because we had just moved down there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you guys want my wallet. You can have my wallet, but I'm keeping my license. So, <laughs> There's you know, nothing in that know, wallet. I have it, but yeah, give me that ID back. You know how it is at the DMV. It's a pain yeah. in the ass. So, yeah. And I, I gave them the wallet, and they all took off. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 
so how long was it uh, i'm sure you walked the rest of the way home and said hey yeah, let's move I, to atlanta <laughs> I, no it wasn't that i didn't wasn't like that but i had actually got kicked in the head when they when they knocked me down Oof. broke yeah. my glasses and i just walked home and we went to the hospital and you know if only that would happen today they would be in a world of oh, hurt oh god I'd yeah be, yep wrist locked to death <laughs> so from chattanooga and I, to get jumped yeah to atlanta um yeah it's <laughs> I never will I never thought of any self defense classes after I that was I wanna say early two thousand twelve when that wow. happened. Yeah. So Yeah, martial arts and self defense oh uh, well I don't even know if Joe Rogan's podcast was out then, so you probably No, didn't. I wasn't listening to his yeah. stuff back at that time. So two thousand twelve I was already trained in five years. Really? So but I was 2012. I was either a blue belt or purple belt. I can't remember because I life hit me really hard in the blue belt year. So I took a long time at blue belt compared to most. But you know, martial arts, especially around here, just wasn't as big as it is now. We're lucky right now. I mean, it is booming. Yeah, martial arts community around here is booming. So I don't I don't see it slowing down for us. So Chattanooga to Sandy Springs. When did y'all move to the south end from the north side of Atlanta? 2016 was when. Well, no, it was late 2015 when we moved down to. to so you you started Atlanta. training as soon as you moved down, almost. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Did you do you remember looking up any jujitsu schools no, on the I north was, side? I was at Publix up in um, Sandy Springs and saw a, a guy with a. I want to say, I believe it was an, an Alliance Jiu-Jitsu hoodie, and I had talked to him about it, mm -hmm. told him I heard about it on, Jiu -Jitsu, on Joe Rogan podcast, and he kind of was like, yeah, you should give it a shot sometime, and just kind of did a search, and Phillips' gym came up, and that's when yeah, everything started from there. Oh, pretty cool. So um, I usually ask people when they start, you know, you get a new person walking in the door, I say, what, what brings you here? You either heard a Jocko podcast, a Joe Rogan podcast, or you want to do that UFC stuff. <laughs> and they they usually tell me, once upon a time, it used to be the UFC stuff. Yeah. That's kind of fizzled out. Now people really know what jiu-jitsu is. Now they usually tell me that they heard a Jocko or a Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. And, like, they've been the two biggest ambassadors for jiu-jitsu you could ever imagine. Like, I, I don't know how many followers – Jocko has now. I'm kind of curious that we're talking about that. But people listen to Jocko and Joe Rogan more than they do the president at times. So 2.6 million followers for Jocko. There ain't no telling how many Joe has. Joe Rogan's got 15.8 million followers. Yeah, so about 18 million people. Yeah, hear about jujitsu. Hear about jujitsu. That, that's a good thing. It's yeah, great for the sport. And the things that Jocko's doing, man. They, um, you know, they uh, sponsored ADCC this year. Jocko Fuel. Really? Yeah. I didn't know. So that. they're they're Joe Rogan did too. They sponsored ADCC. So they're pouring money into the sport. It's only gonna be better for us in the long run. Yeah. So. You start shortly after that. You start jujitsu January. What year is that? Twenty sixteen. Now. Yeah. So I was playing on my phone as I was preparing preparing for this podcast of trying to see what the oldest picture of you I had in my phone. And I got one of uh, fall of sixteen. We just talked about it before we went on air. So fall of sixteen, you're already starting to take morning class. Yeah. So for y'all that don't know, back then. I, um, I was teaching at my coach's gym, Smith BJJ and McDonough, and Philip taught at nighttime, and I would teach the 6 a.m. class. And so you leave the night class to come to the morning class because of the warm ups, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Philip's warm ups are a little bit too involved, and I like him. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure why I tried your class, but then it was like, all right, yeah, we do like maybe five, 10 minutes, and that's, that's enough. Yeah, warm-ups, I've always 
felt a particular way about warm-ups. For anybody that's listening to this and want to come try a class out, um, I don't think warm-ups should be, like, super crazy involved, not 15, 20, 30 minutes, because it's a lot of class time eating up in warm-ups. Yeah. And, um, like, I try to do very jujitsu specific warm-ups. So if it's mount week, we're going to work a fundamental mount position, fundamental – uh, ideas for mount. If it's guard week, we're going to work fundamental guard stuff. And we'll warm up using jujitsu instead of aerobics. Yeah, and that makes sense. But to run five or six laps and then sidestep in and then, you yeah. know. Felt like the Marine Corps roll, all over again. Rolls and backward <laughs> rolls and shrimp in. And that's, yeah. I, in the 40s, that gets old. Yeah, yep. I'd, so, get, I'd be sore just from doing warm-ups. Then yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's kind of the old school Brazilian way. I remember when I started jiu-jitsu, they used to do that all the time. They'd be like, hey, let's run and flip and jump up and down the mat for 45 minutes, and then we'll get into technique because this will force you to use your technique because your muscles are so fatigued. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over there like half dead thinking, yeah, I, I can only use technique because I'm half no, he dead. Would, he would do the warm-ups and then – he would work – we would do one throw, one takedown technique, which, you know, again, I wasn't a fan of <laughs> at that age, even even more so now. And then we would do, you know, ground techniques. So, yeah, the warm-ups got old real quick. So, how do you feel about takedown weeks now, I, the older you get? We, I haven't been – I haven't tried any takedowns for a while. So, I, <laughs> I think the weeks that you do them, I'm not here. So – yeah, I, I avoid them if I can. That's something I want to talk about, kind of, is uh, jiu-jitsu for the older crowd. I want to hear kind of your perspective on, you know, what. first off, I guess we got to decide what, what's, what's the older crowd. At what age limit do we get to start calling people the older crowd? I'd say at 40. Oh, I'm close. I'm only yeah four years away. I mean, I'm about to turn 36 this summer. I would say summer. 40, yeah. So and I think with takedowns, my biggest fear is getting hurt from yeah. somebody that's not experienced. Yeah, you know, but that's what happens in jujitsu. Usually, the injuries, your injury on your shoulder. Even. Yeah, if I can usually get people safe and understanding jujitsu in that first year, the injuries decrease tremendously usually that first year people get hurt because it's white belts hurting themselves because they don't know how to fall appropriately they don't know how to say no sometimes sometimes especially when you're older you just gotta say stop let me up let me yeah. breathe tap you know whatever so yeah if i can get people through that first year of training the amount of injuries they get usually decreases a lot so Let's hear about jiu-jitsu at 40 years old. What what techniques do you like? What techniques do I like? Uh, this is a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> I like the simple ones. Yeah. <laughs> if it involves more than two moves and or two yeah, two moves and I'm yeah, I I lose interest. Yeah. And that's understandable. Yeah, Brian's been new on this uh once upon a time I want to talk kind of the evolution of Brian. It was chin straps and guillotines. And for how long did you do that? Just your whole offense revolved around chin straps. Yeah, chin straps and guillotines probably up until about a year ago. Yeah. And I'm not sure what made me gravitate towards wrist locks. It's just something that popped in my head and yeah. it seemed to, seemed to work. Yeah. You know. So from white belt to purple belt, it was all about the chin strap and guillotines. Well, I, I still remember you telling me to or noticing that I, you know, I grab the chin as a guy. Yeah, make sure you lean into that, which is what I did. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I'm I'm a fan of it. Like a lot of people, when they start getting their chin snatched around, they have, especially in class, they people want to win practice still for some reason. People just they want to win practice and like there's someone grabbing on my chin like and they're good at it my goal was a little different than everybody else's everybody's trying to win practice i'm trying to foster like growth yeah you know and if you're 
grabbing on my chin and you're good at it, you know, lean into it. Yeah, for sure. I think it actually wrist lock started when my sho- really when my shoulders started bothering me. I couldn't, you know, headlock anybody anymore. So I yeah. just kind of figured out if I go for the head and then they're reaching for their head and then their their wrists are, are vulnerable. That's very smart. Like they're going to defend it, puts yeah. them in a dilemma. It's like they can sit there and get choked or get their hands involved and get wrist locked. Yep. So you've been wrist locking now for about a year, getting close to a year? Yeah, probably about a year. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I, I think before the the stiff arm is what what you, you recognize first. And then, yeah. Then the chin strap, but yeah. But that was defense leading into offense. Yep. So. Yeah. I, yeah, wrist locking for about a year. The um, I always give Brian a hard time. I don't know, y'all might not have heard this before or not, but Brian had his surgeries, and I knew they worked on two arms at once. And he came back after he healed up stronger than what he left. <laughs> and I said, Brian, what do they do? Put horse tendons in your arms? Like they, I don't, they, uh, I don't understand how you go out hurt. They, you come they back, put adamantium in my <laughs> in my arms. You come back stronger yeah. than you left. I'm not sure why that or how that works, but you know. But it started out. I'll take it as, uh, you know, the butcher grip. I would imagine. Yeah. The meat and yep. the cutting all day, every day is forced. I mean, I'm sure that's why you had carpal tunnel, but you got some grip strength. Yeah, I remember <laughs> some good grip strength. I think the first time I rolled with uh, with Jared, he's like, "Man, I thought mechanics had strong, yeah, strong grips." So yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, Jared's one of our mechanics that's got a good death grip, too. And we got some guys in here with some good grips, and and it's like their work life promotes their good jiu-jitsu. Yeah. So chin straps, wrist locks, uh, extra tendons in your arms or stem cells, whatever you got in yep. there to make them better. And so you, you made a comment about the stiff arm. And uh, as a defensive movement, someone's passing your guard, you know, you hip escape away, stiff arm in their armpit. Yeah. You, you've you probably sent me flying with that hundreds of times. Yeah. <laughs> hundreds uh, of times. Yeah, again, I remember you uh, commenting about me or learning to get up higher on my on my shoulders so I can't do that. But yeah. yeah, it's, yeah it you definitely and, – your stiff arm – changed my game for yep. sure because i would i would pass brian's guard and as soon as i go to set on side control he already had this frame in my armpit and as i would go to settle my weight down his stiff arms and hip escapes away yeah so that's when when i pass brian's guard or usually mainly when i pass everyone's guard now i kind of do it just to i pass a little further north and go towards north south so you can't stiff arm me off anymore and that was a once your training partner throws you a few times, a few hundred times, you start to uh, learn yeah, that it don't work. Yeah, it's like now with Steven. I can't wrist lock. Well, I, we try to – we Steven and I fight for wrist locks more than anything else, which yeah. is hysterical. Cause it's it, fun. I'm sure it looks like we're over there playing patty cake with each other, but he well, catches me and I catch him. So, Well, me and you kind of do that too yeah. with the wrist locks. Yeah. It's, it's fun. I kind of do that with everybody. Like, not wrist lock, but like – if I'm playing with a leg locker, I try to play leg locks. If I'm training with a wrist locker, I do wrist. I try to adapt my game to one of our students, whatever their game is, and try to beat them yeah. at their own game. Exactly. And it, so it creates a lot of fun. So, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu as an old-timer, for some reason you got this stigma in the gym of, of notoriously missing the warm-ups. Where did that come from? <laughs> Probably because for me. For me, missing the warm-ups, showing <laughs> up late. Um, but you don't even try to hide it. This is what no, this is what no, cracks I, people up. I wear that badge with pride. Well, class will start. I'm showing the warm-up, or we're going over the warm-up. You know, first five ten minutes of class. Brian's here now. He's here on time, <laughs> but he I'm still late. He <laughs> deliberately just. He don't care either. He'll just stand there and watch you. And then when the warm ups are done, he'll jump on the mat and get started. Yeah, I I don't know why it's. You're just here to beat up your friends. Yeah, I. I think when I was. 
43, 44, I was just like, yeah, I, I just, I'm happy coming out. Yeah. Rolling, doing what I can, and then going home, obviously. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. Like, it's, um, jujitsu is your journey for sure. It's not, it's not your coaches. It's not your, I mean, you play a part of your coaches and your teammates' journey, but it's really yours. Yeah. And, you know, again, if you're 20 years old and you're doing that, I'd like, hey, you know, come on. But when you're a purple belt that's been training for a long time, you're an older person, you're just there to have fun. Yeah. I mean, have fun with your buddies, get some training in, get some wrist locks in. Yeah, I'm – want to keep doing this as long as possible yeah. so and that that was kind of the next question that i had for you that i want to lead up to you what's what's the brian's uh long-term goals through jiu-jitsu Just, what's next you know, keep training as much as i can try to um try to learn learn uh i mean I mean, you know, I've stopped. I've stopped drinking last year, and mm -hmm. in doing so, and losing weight, I feel like I can do more now than what I can or what I could do before. You know, the first five years I was training, and now it seems like I'm. There's more has opened up to me. Yeah. Like you know, close guard, and I'm trying to play more, more close guard, and um, branching off from that. Yeah. So, it feels like I'm. I'm Playing catch up, no, so to speak. It's that's a good thing. Like I catch myself still. I mean, it it may be close guard week, and I'm you know you play close guard from day one of jujitsu. I am still learning details. Like every time I try to teach something, and it's like, man, I learned a new detail this yeah. time, and then I get back around to whatever the technique is. And then it's a new detail. So you're saying even at mid 40s, an old dog can learn new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a simple new trick, but yeah, you can still learn but a new trip, trick. I it's mean, forever learning. Yeah. For the longest time, I would just kind of um, not really pull guard, but I would let let my opponent, you know have an advantage and be on top and I would try to rely on them making a mistake and I would just stiff arm them off of me as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, being offensive about it and yeah. not immediately putting myself in a bad position. Right. And it, it it's I still do that sometimes, but, you know, I'm making an effort to not start off in a bad spot as opposed to, you know digging yourself yeah. out of the bad spot. Um well, since you brought it up, I'd like to kind of bring it up on camera, and we can edit this out if you want to. You made this comment about you stopped drinking a while ago. So how long has it been since you've stopped drinking? I stopped October of 21, so it's been just over a year. 21, about so a little over a year? Yeah. How has that helped? You have kind of talked about it through your jiu-jitsu as far as you feel like you're backtracking a little bit on some of the stuff you learned. Is that physical, mental? All the above? I'd, I'd say all the above. Um, well, let's go through that. Physically, how do you feel better I, since? Yeah, I feel a lot better now. Um, sleeping better. Uh, not as, I guess, as sore as I usually used to be. I mean. I w do you know what, why alcohol will cause soreness? Is that is it the sugar or the yeast in it maybe? Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing the sugar. Yeah. You know. Well, I know sugar is bad for inflammation. Yeah, it, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Some of you experts out there, if y'all know that answer, tell us. I'm sure it's the sugar, though. Sugar's the biggest killer or uh, biggest fuel for inflammation. So, yeah. how is – have you cut out all sugar altogether? No. I've, okay. I still indulge once in a while. Yeah, of course. For the most part, I um, have a fairly, I guess, clean diet, you yeah. could say. Yeah. I've <laughs> I found recently that I like uh, oatmeal – with some uh, Jocko powder, protein powder. Yeah, some protein some oatmeal. Milk. Yeah. Which flavor of milk have you been doing? Uh, peanut butter or the mint chocolate chip? 
use how ten as your coupon code. Get ten percent <laughs> off. Shameless plug on our Jocko products. But yeah, I've been mixing that with yeah. oatmeal at night and some blueberries and raspberries or blackberries, and that's been been my go-to meal. Post training meal. Yeah, that's a good training, one. Yeah. yeah. No, I I I love oatmeal. Yeah. I am a fan. Of, I when I was a kid, my mom would buy those. Well, not buy. We we were poor kids, so we had a food stamp card a mile long. So we would have our house was always packed full of groceries. That's why I don't understand people are like, we don't have food in the house. Well, you get food stamps, don't you? Why don't you buy groceries with yeah. it? You know. So we were poor kids, and our house was full of groceries. So every morning, my mama would pack. She would make me oatmeal breakfast, but them little instant oatmeals, yeah. and I fell in love with those things. So I've I've been an oatmeal fan my entire life. And I do. Well, those instant ones are full of sugar, so now I do the, um, I'll mix in some protein every now and then. I'll yeah. tell you this weird kick I'm on, is I'll buy the plain Greek yogurt, the nasty yogurt, and the flavoring for uh, water, like the squirt Mio's yeah. or the powdered, I'll mix that, the sugar-free ones, in with my yogurt, and then add some scoops of oatmeal to give it some texture, Really, and it's like zero fat. I can't remember how much, how many calories is in it. Zero sugar, and it's like a protein bomb. So midday, if I'm between lunchtime class and night class, and I, you know, I can't yeah, train on a full stomach. Yeah. But I'll eat that protein, or the protein yogurt, to fuel me for the next workout, and it's been great. So I eat a little cleaner oatmeal than what I used to, but it's it's good. I'm, I'm a fan of oatmeal. So physically inflammation sleeping better feeling better yeah what about mentally mental I, clarity i mean <laughs> yeah i my confidence has definitely gone up since i've stopped drinking um you know it's been somewhat tumultuous with me and me and the wife i mean we're better we're a lot better now but yeah. their first six seven months that was you know well i'm sure you're probably pretty I mean, I was, irritable I was, um drinking probably since i was 18 up until mm. here recently so it it took me a while um for my I, I think it was my nervous system just going through withdrawal from not having alcohol because i just you know i stopped cold turkey so but yeah that's impressive I, Brian. i feel you know Mentally and physically, a lot better. And um, you know, I wasn't gonna bring it up on camera. I wanted, I was gonna wait and let you do it if you did. But you know, it's I got a cool luxury here at the gym of like I kind of know everybody's story, um, because I talk to I talk to every member because yeah. they check in with me, they pay their tuition with me, and I tr try to be friends with all of them. So I kind of know everybody's story. So I knew as far as the drinking and the sobriety and what you've been going through. And it's, yeah, it was a, a year ago you told me, hey, I'm done drinking. Yeah. Um, and then. I couldn't tell you how many times I'd, I'd uh, train till 7.30 and then on the way home I'd stop and grab a six-pack or, you know, some yeah. Jack Daniels and, you know, start. And then I'd wake up 1 o'clock in the morning, you know, after it, you know, passing out yeah, and going upstairs. And, you know, finally, you know, Heather was like, you know, you don't like what you how you talk to me sometimes when you're drinking. And I, I cut out liquor, hard liquor, um, I want to say a year, mid-2020, I stopped drinking hard liquor because that was, drinking that, I was, you know, the filter would, would come off easier than, Drinking beer. Yeah. So I stopped doing that um, 2020, and then 21, I stopped. You know, it's like, you know what? I'm going to cut it out, cut it out altogether mm -hmm. and have well, it look back. I want to commend you for it. I'm proud of you because throughout this process, you kind of checked in with me a little bit. That When you stopped drinking, you said, hey, I'm – a week sober, a month sober, yeah. two months sober. Hey, I'm three, four, five months sober. So I've, I've seen the progression. Uh, therapy helped a lot too. Yeah, it absolutely. Helped. I bet you it know, did tremendously. Yeah. 
So now a year in of sobriety, physically better shape as you're getting older, you know, yeah. you're still old man. But <laughs> you yeah, fit. I started lifting weights too. I, you know, signed on with a trainer because, you know. Yeah. Seems like everybody that's starting jujitsu was getting younger. You yes, know. for sure. They're younger, stronger, and faster yeah, and for get, sure. They're getting younger and I'm getting older, so I need to, you know, maintain or get stronger too. So yeah. I figured what the hell. So physically better, feeling better, sleeping better. Yeah. I'm sure the recovery time feels much better. Yeah, I mean I'm in bed nine o'clock, nine thirty every night. You know. I'm pretty sure you're a you're pretty stickler on your schedule as yeah. far as your creature of habit. Oh, for big it. time. I'm a big time creature of habit. Uh, and uh mentally you feel sharper yeah i like i like to hear that as in your mid 40s purple belt you got you've been experiencing a lot of jujitsu over years or have experienced a lot of jujitsu and you still are learning stuff i mean would you would you expect me to do something like this a year ago no not no. at all not and that's what when i told everybody i was like yeah brian is going to be one of my first couple guests they were like, no, he's not. He ain't got. I said, Brian talks all the time. I said, I can't tell you how often me and Brian text and share memes yeah. and stupid stuff online all day, every day. They're like, really? I said, yeah, Brian's a talker. And, you know, everybody in the gym is like that. But a lot of people just don't, you know, get a chance to communicate with everybody. And that's where I was, I'm kind of in a cool position where I get to talk to everybody in the gym so i kind of hear everybody's story and we've had a couple people in the gym that's dealt with uh addiction issues and yeah food issues and uh personal issues all kinds of stuff and that's been my goal kind of with this podcast is get get y'all talking about some of this stuff um you never know who might relate to it you know exactly and lean into it and need help from it so i want to bring up the next topic, and it's a good friend of ours, a guy named Jose. Okay. <laughs> so, Jose, uh, he texts me about, I said, Brian's going to be on. This is a couple weeks ago. And he's been ragging me ever since. You know, about what? About Just, you getting me canceled off that. I said, yeah, Brian, <laughs> he ain't going to get me canceled. You told he's me good. not to be too controversial, so I'll, I won't say anything. Yeah. I said, but at the same time, we want to have our freedom. We just... There are kids in the gym that are going to listen to this, hopefully. But I'm going to get a kid on here next, hopefully. I'm yeah. Get a young person on here. I want to talk to everybody. Okay. See what they have to say. So let's. So hopefully we'll get Jose to watch this. Let's talk about Jose for a minute. When did you meet Jose? <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember meeting him. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got a terrible memory. Um. Yeah, I, I don't really remember the exact year or month that i met him and uh was it in the 6 a.m class or nighttime i class? think he came at one of the 6 a.m classes um i'm sure you heard the story about he came one day and i guess i he rolled with me and i just kind of laid into him and smashed him like it was nothing just get up and walked away and <laughs> yeah I, I don't remember exactly you know what day or you know when exactly that we met and then it just kind of snowballs from there yeah he uh he told me the other day he sh he, he walked into because jose was already a blue belt was yeah he? he was already a blue belt i believe if i remember right because he trained back in the day like when i started training he's tr he started training before i did i believe right before i did and he took a good 10 year 12 year break from okay. jiu-jitsu and then he, he walks into a 6 a.m class and he said that how how welcoming we were, you know, the 6 a.m. people, me, everybody, you know, we had a kind of a good core group back then of same people every day. Yeah. And he, he said he absolutely fell in love with jujitsu again. And um, he is now a purple belt out in, what's that city he lives Austin. in? Austin. Austin, but he lives just outskirts of Austin. Do you know the name of it? No, I, I forget. He lives in the same city of sheepdog response jiu-jitsu the tim kennedy school yeah whatever the name of that city is just right outside of austin I mean, so, i've been there twice i should know but you know, yeah I, it's texas it's yeah. big <laughs> so just recently got his uh purple belt from his coach out there 
Apollo. I can't remember Apollo's last name. Apollo's got a heck of a track record. He's legit. Just yeah, he's but, strong for his size. Yeah, and Jose just got his purple belt. He actually taught, has been teaching at Tim Kennedy School. Yeah, a couple I think classes. he's the morning class guy. Yeah, so uh, super proud for Jose. That I wanted to bring him up because a friend of ours, but you drove. Well, tell me about visiting Jose. Uh, I think it was kind of like a spur of the moment thing after I got the motorcycle. I had left in, uh, I think it was November of 2020. I think when I rode out there, I left on a Thursday night, spent the night in Alabama, and then the next day I was up six o'clock in the morning and I rode all day and Got to his house around 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. that night. Rode a Goldwing from. No, it wasn't a Goldwing. It wasn't a Goldwing. It was, it was a Kawasaki, the oh, loud yeah. one. That's right. I forgot you had a yeah, couple. Yeah. I rode out there. I, it was overcast and cold till about Louisiana, about midway through Louisiana. Then the sun came out, and I was like, oh, thank God, because I was freezing. And just cruising all the way to yeah. Texas on the bike. Riding all the way to Texas. It was it was a good time. I, I think the highlight of the trip was going over the Mississippi. Oh, I bet that was I'd pretty never, cool. Never seen that before. So yeah. going over the bridge was nice. Then, you know, I got there like around 9.30 at night. Mm-hmm. So of course, he's like, yeah, you need to get to bed. We're going to jiu-jitsu tomorrow. I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm not training jiu-jitsu. <laughs> I've just been on a bike for and the past like, 16 day, hours. <laughs> I'm sore and I'm deaf from the from the exhaust being so loud. And he's yeah. like, yeah, all right, then I'll, I'll give you that. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't train out there that when I rode out. But, yeah, it was it was a good trip. Yeah. Very cool. That's so motorcycle. How how many hours was that total? Probably about sixteen hours altogether. All together. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. I bet because I remember when you came back home, you took a couple of days off because you said you're so yeah. sore from yeah. riding the bike out there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a, a painful trip, but it was worth it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Go see a buddy halfway across the country yeah. on a motorcycle. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Well. I think we'll call it at that. We spent a long time, a long time on camera. I wanted to um, share your journey a little bit with the people, with our students. Um, talk about jujitsu and jujitsu for the older crowd and um, the hardships and benefits of uh, sobriety and what it took. Yep. Like I said, I'm, I'm more than proud of you, Brian. I, I've been every step of your jiu-jitsu journey um i consider you a, a a great friend of mine and i'm super grateful to have you here and i cannot wait to wrap a brown belt and black belt around your waist because it's going to happen uh, we'll see well i've noticed over the years that you you've seen it now you've been training long enough people come and people go but it, it seems like the ones that stick around to about that purple belt they they stick around. Yeah. They stick around. I don't know what it is, but once they've made a decision to last that long, they're here. And there's no doubt in my mind you're going to be one of those guys, and I'm excited right. to give you your black belt one day. Any last words from you, Brian? Last words for me? No. I mean. I got a couple questions for you real fast. Okay. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Uh, well, this is easy. We already know this answer. Guard or takedown? Guard puller or takedown? Guard. <laughs> you, All day, I every day. shoulder anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, good. Wrist locks or what's your favorite submission? Probably wrist locks. Cause, yeah, it's got to be a wrist I, lock. It, it's going to sound, um, I guess, kind of dickish, but catching people, the the, the – See, seeing the shock on their face when people get caught is, is I guess, makes it worthwhile. Well, that's – the element of surprise yeah. is a legit thing when it comes to warfare, and it's no different in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Like, if you can catch something through a surprise attack, yeah. it, and and it works. It, yep. it's, a, it's a good thing. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Yeah, it's – Four o'clock in the afternoon, you got a coffee here. Yeah, I, I stopped drinking alcohol and I started drinking coffee. Yeah. Any um, any wise words for the older grappler who who's scared to start jujitsu? 
wise words from the older grappler um or a word of encouragement for someone wanting to start or even if they're thinking about quitting i mean plenty of people say this just don't feel like you need to compete with the younger crowd just just mm -hmm. do your thing and you know try to try to improve every day yeah you know nothing that nobody else has, hasn't said before keep moving keep showing up yeah all right um conclusion of episode two thanks brian thank you see y'all